Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. you and also with you let us pray grant us O lord to trust in you with all our hearts for as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen, amen. The first reading is from the book of Proverbs. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous are blessed for they share their bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because they are poor or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord pleads their cause and despoils of life those who despoil them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading responsively Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but stands fast forever. The hills stand above Jerusalem. So does the Lord stand around about his people from this time forth forevermore. The scepter of the wicked shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the just, so that the just shall not put their hands to evil. Show, good, show your goodness, O Lord, to those who are good and, and to, to those, those who are true of heart. heart. As for those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with the evildoers. But, but peace be upon Israel. A reading from the letter of James. My brothers and sisters, 
Do you act with, do, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among, yourse among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor is it not the rich who oppresses you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked to the scripture? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill. And yet, you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him. And she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the, ch- eat the children's food crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. They brought him him to a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure and saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Several years ago, when I was in the secular world, I received management training on navigating the hiring and supervising of employees under the Americans with Disabilities Act, specifically training about making legal accommodations. And the trainer made a statement that I have remembered for many years. He said that everyone has some condition that others must make accommodations for. Some have recognized disabilities, like blindness or anxiety or mobility issue, but others have particular personality quirks, like they talk too much or they laugh too loudly or they only function well if they can sit in a dark room for several hours a day. Some people are tall and they need additional leg room. Some are short like me, need step stools. Some are great readers, but they can't do simple math. Some can fix or assemble any piece of furniture, but they can't write a good letter. In a functioning community, we celebrate people's strengths while accommodating differences or weaknesses. Sometimes accommodation means actively removing a barrier so someone can succeed. Other times, it just means adjusting our expectations so that we can love the person, even if they do talk too much or laugh funny or whatever. Because every person is unique and created in the image of God. And God loves everyone and gives blessings to all who sincerely seek God. And God calls us to love our neighbor as God loves us. And when we love in this way, 
we treat people with dignity no matter what their circumstances and no matter what accommodations they may need. Now, all of our scriptures this morning talk about loving our neighbor, even those different from us. And I want to mention that right at the beginning so that you don't think that I've heard any kind of bad report about you guys and your neighbors, because actually I've heard really good things. But it is our scripture this morning, and so all of us, including me, can always grow in how we treat our neighbors. So I'd like to talk about that a little bit. The scriptures invite us to look at each person as their equal, created in the image of God, just as we are, even though society might give some people more status than others. For example, the gospel describes two healings. The first, the Syrophoenician woman and her daughter were Gentiles. They were outsiders to the Jews, and they were considered of a lowest status. The Bible doesn't tell us if the second healing was a Jew or a Gentile. However, it does tell us that he lived in the Decapolis region. Now, the Decapolis referred to 10 city-states with a population that was largely composed of Gentiles. They were prosperous trade centers, and they'd been consolidated so that they could protect Rome in case of a Jewish uprising. So regardless of whether this man healed was a Jew or a Gentile, he would have been considered of lowest status because he chose to live in this region. But we see that Jesus heals both of these people in need just as he healed observant Jews. Now, Proverbs tells us that rich and poor are equal. Both are our neighbors. Both deserve God's blessings. And as disciples, we're called to treat people equally. James warns us about showing favoritism. You know, the challenge is that most of us have some sense of insecurity. And often when we feel insecure, if we're not careful, we unconsciously seek to find some people, some group of people, or some person to look down our noses at so that we'll feel better about ourselves. Now, most all of us have been educated, and we're sensitive enough to avoid looking down on people because of race or age or gender or disability. But sometimes we fall victim to criticizing others because they believe differently than we do, or they have a different value system, or they act differently than we might expect. Or there's the old personality quirk again that may lead, we, we see that quirk and then we disregard any other gifts they might bring. Or sometimes we fail to help people because we blame them for their misfortune without listening and understanding their stories. But partiality contributes to deep divisions in our communities, our country, and our world, and our faith community. It can lead to irreparable barriers between individuals. It weakens communities because it discourages the equal sharing of everyone's gifts. Now, God places people in every community and faith community. He puts them together so that they have the right collection of gifts to help that community succeed. Sometimes circumstances such as poverty or prejudices become barriers that prevent people from fully using their gifts. And so if we fail to love without partiality or to accommodate or lift up people in their weakness, the whole community misses out on those gifts. True love of neighbor and true stewardship of our time, talents, and monies 
require that we recognize that everyone is created in God's image and Christ is present in each of them. They're all worthy to share in God's blessings and they're worthy of help and healing. And they are also worthy of us loving them as we love ourselves. And yes, loving ourselves is a difficult balance too. We don't wanna love ourselves so much that we become narcissistic but we also don't want to fall prey to, to low self-esteem either. Likewise, we don't want to put anybody on a pedestal, but we don't want to trample them either. Loving, supporting, and nurturing others is difficult, especially those different from us. And to truly love others, we must overcome our own insecurities and be constantly vigilant to the Christ in others. Those who are different from us are our neighbors too. And so the commandment to love our neighbors requires that we love them too. Booker T. Washington once wrote the following. He said, if you lift yourself up, lift up someone else. So we love, support, and help, and nurture others, and when we do that, we lift up ourselves and our community. None of us is perfect. We've all got something about us that others need to accommodate. And we learn to love ourselves despite our imperfections. So we also need to realize that others have imperfections too. And we're called to love them despite them. We're called to lift them up. Sometimes lifting them up means tangible help. Other times it just means showing our love by accepting them just as they are. Loving our neighbors means loving and lifting up all people. And in lifting up others, we open ourselves up to a fuller relationship with God and humanity. Amen. Amen. Please join with me in affirming our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of me of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became a part of the Virgin Mary and was made in there. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. We the Father and the Son who is worshipped and glorified. He is so through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic. Apostolic Church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
The prayers of the people are found as form four on page 388 in your Book of Common Prayer. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we've asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. You may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. everyone. I want to welcome everyone who is coming for a homecoming and say hello to all of us who are 
You can be seated, please, if you like. I want to welcome everyone who is coming back for homecoming, and I want to say hello to everyone who is a regular. Um, as you know, I'm new, so I know some who are regular. But I'm not quite sure all who the regulars are, but I will get to know you as time goes on. I also want to thank all those who are joining us on the live stream broadcast. It is uh, great to see everybody. Are there any announcements that folks have that we need to hear about? All right, yes, please. Okay, and everybody knows it's homecoming, right? Lunch is after, right? You have an announcement. Okay, any other announcements? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself in offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. 
God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. Therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us see you These are the gifts of God for the people of God. 
Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ. Bread of heaven. Body of Christ. Bread of heaven. Body of Christ. The bread of heaven. The blood of Christ. The cup of salvation. The blood of Christ. The cup of salvation. Bread of heaven. The body of Christ. The 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 blood of Christ. The cup of salvation. The body of Christ. The bread of heaven. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The communion everlasting life. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. salvation. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Christ keep you in everlasting life. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you an everlasting life. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you an everlasting life. Christ keep you an everlasting life. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Christ keep you an everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the, Christ, the cup of salvation. Of Jesus Christ keep you an everlasting life. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you an everlasting life. Of Christ, the cup of salvation. Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life.
Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ. Amen. The blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ.